Hello everyone, welcome to VTube Tuts. Today we're going to go ahead and show you how to install and set up OBS Studio. Let's go! All right, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up your favorite browser of choice. Mine happens to be Google Chrome and you are going to go to obsproject.com. Once on obsproject.com, you're going to want to download the version of OBS Studio for whatever operating system you happen to be using. I happen to be using Windows, so that is the OS I will be downloading for. All right, with OBS Studio successfully downloaded, we're going to open that up and say yes, that we do want to run OBS Studio's installer. Next, the installer will pop up and we're just going to quickly go through here and make sure that it installs the right location as program files. That's perfectly fine for me. All right, and then once OBS has finished installing, we're just going to say finish and launch OBS Studio. Once OBS Studio has launched, it brings up an auto configuration wizard where it asks us if we want to optimize OBS for streaming or recording. For the sake of you guys, let's optimize it for streaming and I will go over all of these settings there. Next, after choosing whether it's for streaming, recording, or the virtual camera, it will ask us what our resolution is and what we want our FPS to be like. Whether we want to make sure that we maintain a 60 FPS, a 30 FPS, or if we want to prefer higher resolution or prefer 60 frames per second where possible. Obviously, this is going to depend on the kind of games you play and the kind of quality of streams you would prefer. Um, in the case of 60 or 30, but prefer 60 when possible, that would be more ideal for a first person shooter. However, preferring high resolution, that's something that I would strive for is higher resolution over higher frames per second. Then again, I'm not a fast paced gamer by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so choose what you feel would be best for you. After we've configured our preferred resolution and frames per second, OBS will begin to ask us whether what service we want to go ahead and stream to, whether that is Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Restream, Twitter. In my case, since I am a Twitch streamer, I will be choosing Twitch here. Uh, you can either connect your account, which will ask you to log in to your Twitch account, or use a stream key. If you don't want to connect to your Twitch account or you've been given a stream key, by somebody else to stream to uh, their channel or their team's channel, you would want to pick use stream key. To get the stream key, we're going to go back to the browser and open up Twitch. From here, I'm going to go to my profile and go to the creator dashboard. And once that loads up, we're going to go to settings and stream. And here is the primary stream key. You do not want to go ahead and show this on stream or in some form of recording. If anybody gets a hold of your stream key, they will be able to stream to your channel or to uh, the other person's channel. If someone's gone ahead and shared a stream key with you for like a team channel by using the permissions down here, people who can stream to your channel, then you will get an email with the stream key instead rather than having the stream key appear in the dashboard. But since this is just my personal channel, I'm just going to grab the stream key here by pressing the copy button, which copies it to my clipboard, head back over to OBS and paste that in. There is the long blob. If I hit show, it'll show me the, the stream key, but for my own sake, I'm not gonna show off what my stream key is here. Once we've got that all settled, uh, it is highly recommended that you prefer hardware encoding as that forces OBS to use your graphics processor, but if you happen to not have the beefiest graphics card in the world, you might want to switch that over to your CPU instead of your GPU uh, for this value here. However, that will go ahead and make things more processor intensive. And so if you're streaming on a budget, experiment. See what happens. Estimate bitrate with a bandwidth test. For first time streamers, we, you may want to go ahead and see what that is. I'm just going to leave that checked here so that you guys can see. Hit next. Here it is automatically streaming a test white noise image over to Twitch to go ahead and figure out 
which Twitch server is the best server to connect to and stream to. In, in my case, as you can see here, the best server happens to be in the US West, Salt Lake City, Utah. All right, once all the test results are complete, it will go ahead and give you some more information about your stream, such as here I'm streaming to Twitch using an automatic server, which is what was recommended to me. Personally, I would set the server to something that is close by. That way you don't have to deal with any sort of more lag, trying to auto detect which server is best. And overall, like you, you should know it will work so long as that server is online. Video bitrate will be automatically detected. My personal recommendation when it comes to a bitrate and your max bitrate that you can achieve is I would recommend going half of what your internet speed is. In the case of this where the video bitrate is 6,000 megabits per second, my upload speed is 10,000 megabits per second. So I would personally go with 5,000 megabits per second or less. Since we chose hardware encoding rather than uh, doing the CPU encoding, it it has picked the hardware encoder NVENC here, since I'm using an NVIDIA GPU, for both the streaming encoder and recording encoder. The recording quality has been set to high quality with a medium file size, and our resolution is that 1920, like it suggested, with 60 FPS. Let's go ahead and apply those settings now. All right. If you've been following along with us up to this point, then congratulations! You now have OBS set up and is, you are ready to get streaming <laughs> and recording. However, one thing that you may have noticed right here in the center of the screen is a giant black box. That is the video that you would be streaming if you hit start streaming at this point. That, that's obviously not what we want, but we do see that the microphone activity here uh, is working. So. We've, we've at least got audio working for us. Luckily, I've launched Minecraft for us to go ahead and test with if I just turn on the volume here. All right, now that we've got Minecraft launched and running, you can see that the Minecraft audio is now being recorded, but we still have a black screen. It's not capturing our game footage like what we want. So what we're going to do is inside the sources, we are going to tell OBS that we want Minecraft as one of our video sources. So in the sources pane, click on the plus icon and then click on game capture. Let's go ahead and name this Minecraft since that happens to be what we're going to be capturing. And we will capture a specific window in this case. If you happen to play games in full screen, capture any full screen window may just work for you out of the box. But we're gonna capture a specific window and we are going to capture Java w.exe Minecraft 1.17.1. Uh, because of the way Minecraft works, we do want to capture the cursor. Press OK. And there you have it. OBS is now capturing Minecraft. We can see that, you know, nice and smooth. Everything we see in Minecraft is. In OBS, the only problem here right now is that the window for Minecraft in OBS happens to be the same size as on our computer. To make it so that Minecraft takes up the full stream instead of just the little window is we can left click to select the source, right click, go down to transform, and go to fit to screen. And once you've clicked fit to screen, that'll go ahead and resize Minecraft so it takes up the whole screen. Once you're at this point, you can go ahead and start recording or streaming Minecraft or whatever game that you happen to uh, create content for. And there you go. Would you look at that? We're in Minecraft. We're recording. We can run around, break blocks. We can stop the recording here. File. Show recordings. And there it is. And with that, you should be able to start recording uh, your Minecraft adventures for others to see and to share with other people or maybe to keep it to yourself. And uh, hope that the creepers don't go ahead and sneak up behind you and blow you up. If, if this video has gone ahead and helped you out, be sure to leave a like. And if there is something that you just quite don't understand, please leave a comment or uh, join the Discord. 
If you want to see more videos like this, I am planning to do uh, more in a series of setting up for live streams since my computer recently died and is no longer with us and I had to rebuild a new one, which means rebuilding an entire stream setup. So if you want to join me on that adventure of setting up for stream, be sure to go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications so that you know when the next video goes live. All right, hope you enjoyed. This is Frosty Frog with VTube Tuts. And now I gotta find out where those foxes went. Here, foxy, foxy, foxy. I want a pet foxy. Come here, little foxy. No, come here, I've got berries for you. Come back. I know you like berries. Why don't you love me?